Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Strategic Command World War One. Now, um, it's remarkable how different these two series are going. And I'm just maybe I should say, <clears throat> I hope you the viewers realize and don't get too confused that I have two concurrently running series of Strategic Command World War One. One, this one I started um, sort of as my learning process and um, set up to try to, um, you know, well, to go east front first and try to keep the British out of the war. Learned more going on it. The other one has primarily been played, uh, and I will continue it after it, um, live on uh, Slytherin, the, this publisher channel for the game that which is a west front first the schlieffen plan so i try to keep those in the title descriptions in this separate but how they're how different they are and i don't mean just different here but how um different they are here it's almost like the other one is well no this well the uh, mm, austria is doing better um here and I would say here in the other one, I don't know if they're doing better here. Um, Germany, mm, Germany's probably doing a little better here. But yeah, it's it's interesting how they're doing different. And then of course, I haven't watched too much of it. I've just taken a quick look. Rick's my friend's Rick, um, small small YouTuber trying to grow. Um, he's also playing as well. You could check his channel out. So yeah, okay, a few things I want to do I noticed. Okay, here, we can actually see about bombing these guys. They're a little too far out and see if we can kill them. And actually we did, sunk them. Bomb their transports. Best way to deal with troops is to um, sink them at sea instead of fight them on land. Now, um, okay. Oh, I want to make sure I've got the navy. Okay, these guys, I want to... Let's head out to sea, just sort of hide out there. Here. The other one, <clears throat> I'm getting ready for a massive U-boat offensive in here that um, will hit them hard, I hope. For this one, we're barely struggling to keep U-boats operating. This interesting things, like differences like that. And I've tried to send essentially the same strategy at sea. At least I think I have. Okay, um, any of these weak units in the back here? I didn't quite remember, didn't think so. I want to, let's see if we max these guys out, 30 MPP, yeah. Now I want to see about purchasing as Germany another core. Yeah, I think we'll do that. And September, October, we'll be getting some more cores coming. <coughs> Excuse me for Germany. Very good. Austria, not really much worthy to buy. We'll see about getting some anti air sometime, but not just yet. Don't know that if it's enough of a, an issue. Okay. Just trying to, let's see here, any more. Oh, I like where that's positioned. There we go, that's one I want to. Just because it's on the front here, and you could, I could readily see them coming and pounding it hard. But now it looks like we got railway all the way up to here. Let's check the supply. Five, next turn five. Okay, so 
And that may be disrupting it a little bit. And over here, anybody needing reinforcements? Not really. We're going to pound into there about as hard as we can. I want to see how effective this railway gun is. And this one here. Okay, um... Well... Oh, let's... Let's see if I get you into port. Right. Okay. Well, um... The Turks need any upgrading on the front or reinforcing on the front. I don't think there's anything they can really. Oh, we can move these guys up a little. They've already done as much as they can as reinforcements will allow. Getting ready to come in and pound them. I want to shut that down as much as possible. Okay. Here goes. These guys I'm also worried about there. Getting hammered. Bumped into them. The only one from Norway, so they're really hitting that supply line. So they moved a detachment up there. Looks like, oh, they, they're still connected down on the bottom there, so it looks like they brought in reinforcements. Wow. I would have thought they would, now they may be setting up lines of defense back in here, but I would have thought they would have, would have given up trying to hold there. So glad I got cars held there. Hopefully I can keep it. Oh, hello battleship. Were you looking for some of mine? down here I guess. Ouch. Good thing you got those mountain troops in Trieste and not just the detachment. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. Run away, run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. You were just supposed to go down there and mess with them, not, not try to hold off anybody. Ouch. 
I'm gonna be philosophical and go that wouldn't be that bad of a loss. If it really came down to it, now this would be a bad loss. Oh shit. What I am hoping here is they don't have the movement to get in there. Yep, there we go, Toron Torrento. Oh god, that ain't good. That's if they don't attack hard, that's already good for me. Yeah, yeah, hello horses. Okay, hopefully this is a good exchange here, only one off. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Strikes in Russia, very good. Forces seize power in Salonika, okay. Don't know Vienna's Litz forces. Don't know who those are. Don't know enough about it. Okay, Greek Greece is preparing to come in. Okay. Canadian Billy Bishop begins his outstanding career in the Royal Flying Corps. I have heard of him. Russian national morale falls below 50%. Yeah, that mountain course destruction is... Okay, War Minister. Sheikh Sidi Ahmed S. Sharif, leader of the Senussi in Syrianica remains loyal to us and longs for the day when he can drive the Italians from his land. He is ready to arrive, but asks for officers to lead his men and weapons to equip and arm them. Would you like to spend 50 MPP to provide the necessary support? Mm, yeah, we'll do that. It's sort of expensive. Revolt in Cyrenaica. Okay, good. Okay, hunger, hung, Austro-Hungarian. Okay, well... Yep, as you can probably guess, it's going to come up here. Um, well, let's put it sort of over here and here. Um, yeah. Ottomans, okay. And I guess, well, yeah, because that'll be the others going there. Guess one down here to try to head towards the British, because I don't know if those Brits are going to take it. Whatever happened to these guys? Oh, can I move these guys around? Wow, I can move these guys around. Well, before we start doing that, um, let's save this. Hmm. Maybe I should have gone for Rabat, but Fez is, I think, no. Yeah, is Fez the capital? Or... Um, okay, you guys come down here. Oh. There's a heavy cruiser we missed. Very nice missing them. Okay, there you go. Keep messing with them. You come back up into here. You survive that set of encounters. 
Okay, well. Mm. Oh. Okay. That was a misclick. I didn't mean to attack there. So what we're going to do is we're going to quit. Just this is like why I saved. Oh, single player. I'm really not trying to play it to like make sure I get the, the good quote unquote die rolls and all that kind of stuff. It just when I misclick on something like that. Yeah, I'm going to go back and especially since I hadn't done much. Yes. Okay. These guys before we forget. Um, let's just go see if we. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that again. I just wanted to see what was there. I do did think it was better to go inland. A little single player. I'm guessing they don't particularly need supplies and so I just sort of want to move around cause disturbances you know that kind of thing well let's come down here to over here make sure we miss the cruiser a little more securely we come over here okay now let's yeah, because this is a super weak core here. Um, so what we want to do here is swap them out so that we get it off the front lines. And we can reinforce. Or, yeah, reinforce up there. What I want to do is attack here, but that, even that, isn't looking so terribly great. Now, if I were to... Okay, decent range all the way out to there. Not so great of attack opportunities. Okay, well. Now here, we're gonna... This is gonna be a turn of reinforcing, I think. Definitely our sort of forward outpost. very nice to be able to reach all the way out to here. Not quite a Paris gun from here at least, but... Okay, if you can just swap out and then kill that with little or no damage. Yeah, little damage, that's fine. Okay, so we're up to rather good stats. I know we could still do that one, but I'm just, we're down to 72. We've, we've just put all of our effort in reinforcing here and one killed core, so that's, I think, worth it. I think we needed to do that. Okay. Now... Oh, 
Okay, we're gonna start here with aerial observation, artillery fire. Just, I think, gonna cost lives and more lives. Now here, we want to come up to this and hold here, and hold here, and I think both of these we will entrench. Now I'll rotate down one. Yeah, you're looking the right way already. Okay, you, a little Austrian attack there. Okay, well... Good, good. And you can go in and take the hex. Okay, well. They're starving because they've been blockaded. Yes, you can come up that way. It's good to get the bow. Get these guys down. It means another core on the front. I think we're going to continue to just sort of hold over here, partially because we have, shall we say, successfully been pushing, or pushing here as well as, um, too far forward. Okay, well, no, we will. Okay, because we didn't take that, there's probably something back here, and I figured there was. It Polostuk, um, having a zone of control there, so that's fine. They probably see that I'm here. I don't know if they'll want to move off just to attack some horsies. But either way, that is useful. Okay. You come down here. Ooh, you could do a nice attack. Good. Uh, I know we're not dug in, but still. Okay. Um, supply and supply here would be four. Okay, that's that's not so bad. That yeah, used up all of our movement, but you can come there. But I did want to move up. Mm. 
Okay, we'll have three cores with that, and once reinforced, a detachment up there. Well, four cores with that, so let's move him south down here. And... Push up there for better supply management. Okay, well... That just doesn't seem overly good to do. So we're not. I'm not going to do that. Huh, I'm worried still about here. I think we have it contained. Oh, I hate losing that. But what we want to do is crush. Just crush down here. out to 10. Okay, that should probably survive there just fine. Yay, yay, we got Centinia. Contact, ouch, but just with a core, so it's not that bad of an ouchie. Well, they've already attacked. Okay, so we're outside of Triania. But yay, we got that. Okay, which cuts off supplies. Cuts off this unit here pretty badly. Oh damn, again another damn stupid misclick. I didn't mean to do that. Oh damn, okay. Um Do is occupy Nish. Yes, right. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. All that. All that was worth it. Maybe not real human lives, but okay. These guys aren't entrenched, which is a little bit of a problem. Are these guys down here? No, so entrench away, guys. Entrench away. Yeah, that looks like good. Yeah, the rest. They sort of can are. Oh, are these guys up there? No, they're not. Okay, so you entrench as well. And yeah, that looks all right. So we are we're being passive aggressive there to some degree. Well, we're going to see how much they'll be able to reinforce. Hmm. 
Maybe not much. Okay, we're gonna get you walking. You'll help up here if we can get you up there. Ah, okay. Got them moved. Now, down here. Oh, not enough supply connections to... I'm gonna move you up to the front line. I think you're a stronger unit. Take the air. Air unit. Bummer. Ah, well. I think I want you over here. We want you moving forward. Say, I think. Oh, yeah. Well, this is a bit weak, but I don't know how much they'll be able to push past. Him. Okay, reinforce these guys. Oh, no, he can go to what to ten? Yeah, cool. And then if he's not attacked, we can swap them out in either one of the places and get them a little better set up. Okay, well, I hope Bulgaria comes in, now that we have Nish. Even though I know Greece is now coming in, but still, that would be of help, I think. Especially if we still keep Romania out. I want to keep Romania out of the war. Oh, ooh, ooh. ooh, ooh. Um, yeah, let's, let's just run away. That's what you're supposed to do, your horsies. Supposed to run around and mess with them, not fight toe to toe. Okay. Uh, oh, why do I keep doing this? Okay, we gotta like go up to Iceland or something. Okay, you change your mode to this mode, come down to here, you yeah, you can come down to here maybe that way we can maybe start getting the American convoys oh yeah um, Line. Bermuda? No, I don't think. Well, oh hey, British imports. Okay, no, that's that's good. We want to probably on some of the American line here. Um. Okay, yeah, Boston. Well, we're more up here. Okay, I think that's good. And these guys are. See last turn, let's come into here. Keep them guessing. Keep them looking over their shoulders of where or where the, will the next attack be. Okay, well. We just might face Oh, they're, yeah, they're entrenched, okay. Um, so let's spend that there, because it's on a critical front. Um, hmm. I know we only have...
have 61 left. Uh, they moved. Well, that's where we're at it. Let's get you up fully up reinforced. There we go. That's using all of our points, just about. Okay. Purchase for Austria-Hungary. We could do a mountain core to replace that one. That's why it's as cheap as it is. So we'll we'll do that. And well, yeah, we could use. the Marines as well. Just sort of get them there now, get them soon. Germany, here we are. Two more core coming and our friend is the Ottomans. Nothing in the production queue for the Ottomans. And they don't really have enough. Oh no, they do. Okay. Well, hmm, that was weird. Okay, um, hmm. Thought they might. Or should. Yeah, I think nothing fancy. I think just another core. We have these guys here protecting Gallipoli. They're protecting down here. That's all good. If we get the Bulgarians in, we can rush across the territory here and help them with some Turks. I'm hoping... <sighs> I know this is... Bay Brut is a bit vulnerable on Azurum, which is a primary supply source, is also a bit vulnerable here, but I don't hope, I hope they can't attack with too many units against this detachment, or then I should have moved him a little further south. Him I'm planning to move, sort of replace him there. Uh, I want to move him up to the front line here, um, wherever that will be. Hopefully we can hold rise, or however you would pronounce that. And I hope these three core can hold here. So that's sort of that plan. This is just in proper... I just think it's going to take... I want to kill this and then leave a couple of these... Well, maybe a horse unit and a detachment or something down here just to sort of hold from counter-invasions. I don't know if they can. Coming or all the way around here, they might be able to. Let's see, that will better now. That it's, so um, they might... But I'm not sure the mechanics on, you know, taking off from somewhere and coming all the way around for an invasion. But I'm not going to leave that to chance. So, but that would free up, I would hope, um, two, maybe th with this core here, three cores, uh, to really sort of operate either against the British or um, deal with the Russians or something a little more. All right, well, um, okay, let's, well, I'm going to save this again just in case I notice something that I want to change later. I don't know what it would be, but just to just like forgetting to move some naval unit or something. The loss of Vilna reduces Russian national morale. They were below Serbian, na Serbian national morale falls due to the loss of Nish, their temporary capital. The loss of Montenegro's capital reduces Serbian morale. Serbian government moves to Uskurb. Montenegro surrenders. Very good. Austro-Hungary pl plunders. 82. Very nice. Greece joins the Entente, just as their front's crumbling up there. Mm -hmm. We would have let you be. Bulgaria takes an increasing interest in events in Serbia. Bulgaria prepares for war. Welsh, mi miners, uh, Welsh miners and railway workers go on strike. Entente 
evil units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Le Canard and Chance begins publishing in France. Okay, I don't know what that is. Nicholas II becomes commander in chief of the Russian armed forces. Socialists throughout Europe meet at Zimmerwald in Switzerland. Scientists report progress in logistics. Good for the Turks or the Ottomans. Osmans, Turks. Okay, they retreat back. They're coming there. We're seeing a little bit more units out there. Yeah, I figured there's somebody out there. Are you going to come after my horsey core? Looks like, are they moving in more? Units, or was that pulling out of units? I don't know. And having them pull out makes it easier to pinch off some of these stuff. Having them come in there means that if I do cut them off, then there's going to be more units trapped. Okay, they were able to reinforce. They basically weren't, I don't think. Naval mines. Oh, our mines just wounded somebody out here. Okay, ooh, I probably left them out badly. I shouldn't have done that. Ouch for them, a little bit for me. Okay, we gotta deploy some mines better and gotta get some of these ships back into port. You go away, Russians. Yeah, that is the weak unit there. Guys up flying. losing that unit. I mean, I just because I don't think they'll be able to take it. Not that I don't care. I do care. It's one of the three holding there. Oh, that's painful. I just don't think them getting enough units to be able to pound it in. Okay. They're attacking Met's fortress? How interesting. Should have left them out there. Oh, come on, don't get them killed. Sorry, guys, I made a mistake there. Yeah, we know you're back pushing nets. Can they get three? Yeah, no, they only get two. That's what I thought. Normally, two with an entrenchment like that them from taking it. Here they should, there they should be able to get three. Yeah, well, I'm um, fine. Yeah, I'd attack two probably, but. miserable luck with submarines out here or just more of my stupid mistakes either one both would be legitimate at this point bye bye my my mistake
Oh, we are getting ready for a massive Western Front offensive, it looks like. Not to push deeper, just to kill units. My goal will be at least four core destroyed. Yeah, okay, they're they're suffering a trigger losses, yeah, because they're detached from the capital, which is now down in the south there. Yay! Much rejoicing! Yay! Much rejoicing! Okay, lots of disrupted convoys, very good. Yes, yes. First cavalry court. Yeah, that was my. And both of those are my fault. Okay, let's see. UK lost eighteen. Italy lost eleven. UK lost thirteen. UK lost eleven. Russia lost eleven MPP. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, aiding the Ottoman Empire for as long as there's a clear route via Serbia and Bulgaria to Constantinople, we can send aid to our Ottoman ally to help them. In the war against the Entente, uh, to do this, click on the maps at the top of the convoy, and then click OK. The Austro-Hungarian flag and just production points we want to send to them every turn. OK. And the Bernard Dali, Bernardi Corps. OK. I think I'm worried a little bit about um, Belgium coming in, so we're putting these guys here. We're going to save this. Um, east. Okay. Um, just since it's on my mind and um, so we're going to talk about this and then we'll probably end the episode. So if you want more gameplay, leave, come back next time. The Ottoman Empire. Um, one of my friends, um, Ari, really into World War I. Um, we just haven't been able to coordinate. He sort of wants to help give color commentary like IKB does for Railway Empire. We just haven't been able to schedule this, and I'm just pushing ahead not playing it on Saturdays right now just because I want to play it, quite honestly. That's how much I want to do this. Um, I'm not a great expert on World War I, but I do know some things about it. <sighs> Airy argues that the Ottomans sort of had no real choice. There was enough of a war party in their country. And they had been, you know, they had lost. We saw the event. Oh, so we should um, see about. No, we may move him around Cyrenaica or somewhere. Um, we save this right, yes. Well, okay, come here. Okay, good. Um, we're just fooling around at the moment here. Uh, yeah, come out to the desert here. Um, because they, and the reason I just came down here, because they had lost, they had actually held the Ottoman sort of, in a, in a, oh, that's quite a depression. Should be at least one more. Hex up, and they know that. I don't know why they put it way down there. But, um, not that it's going to be much of an issue here. Maybe they want a desert horseman like these guys to be able to ride around. I don't know. But, um, the British had, uh, well, no, the Ottomans, oh, I forget what they called them. Sort of like continuing the old say traps from the Persian Empire, in that they were um, sort of regional, semi uh, autonomous would be wrong in the sense that they were uh, entirely separate, but they were sort of local potentates that were moved around periodically, you know, the individuals um, that controlled certain areas that were sort of, they ruled locally somewhat autonomously, shall we say, from, you know, Constantinople and the, you know, the capital. Britain, oh, um, I never make notes of these things, and I should. Um, 
the Mamelukes. Yeah, that's it. The Mamelukes, they were sort of an especial elite type military force under the Ottomans. Well, at some point they eventually, whether... Uh, I think more or less they, they continued to pay lip service to that they were part of the Ottoman Empire, but basically they were functionally independent, unlike some of these other areas, for quite quite some time. And then the British come in and kick them out and set up their sort of prote protectorate. Now, the Ottomans are still controlling at least some of this. I don't know if they are still controlling Tripa, because until post-Italian colony, this is Saranaica, and this is sort of Libya or, or Tripolania over here. Um, they're sort of two different regions. They're not, they weren't, they didn't see themselves really as like one place or one country. That's sort of a modern thing. And that's sort of why there's civil wars and what's not going on because um, these guys over here don't care what these guys think and vice versa. Um, to this day, it was just Gaddafi and, and whatnot that was sort of keeping them together. So we'll see how that comes out. Um, but so they had lost this to the Italians. They had lost their last of their outside of the sort of immediate greater Constantinople area um, Balkans territories to the you know the Bulgarians and whatnot Serbs and everything else so there was a you know a hawkish element within the Ottoman Empire and I keep wanting to say it because it's not necessarily Turk it's it's they're Osman's Turks you know, going way back, because before that they were the Seljuk Turks. Now, they're both Turks, it's just sort of who the ruler is, or the ruling clan, or whatever, and I don't know all the arcania of it, but... Um, and so it's this Ottoman Empire, in which, for a long time, there was... Well, no, there were a lot of Greeks living in here. Probably right now at, you know, 1915, I don't know, what, a quarter? Or more of the population of Constantinople is Greek and Christian at this time. It isn't until the collapse of the Ottoman Empire and um, Ataturk, for all of his secularness, he is a um, Turkic um, nationalist and wants to get rid of all non-Turks. Or he's not so much a racist, he's not like... Um, you know, Hitler wanting to kill off the other people. He just wants, say, the um, uh, Kurds. He just wants to call them Mountain Turks. He wants them to to become, you know, he and modern-day Turkey, uh, though I think the, um, the current leader, um, and I keep blanking on these names, picturing his face, um, may have some vague ideas of wanting to reestablish sort of an um obviously it wouldn't be the ottoman empire but trying to be an empire again ruling over other ethnicities because yeah so you know arabs um kurds you know jews down in israel you know they're just small egyptians whatever you know um that's what so this is an empire um ataturk wants to make it a Turkish national thing. So, yes, maybe kill off large groups. The Armenian genocide that, that did happen, say it here, um, was mostly, I think, done because, uh, cause it was done under a bit more of the Ottoman auspices, it was done because they saw them as maybe more loyal to the Russians and sort of like a fifth column to just be dealt with. But for their longest things, it definitely the Turks were supreme, you know, the highest level of culture and group and whatnot. But these other ethnicities could readily exist under Ottoman rule. And a lot of these um, cities, there's whole towns, cities in Greece that are made up of people that are from the Turkish coast that had a thousand plus years, two, three thousand years even. Uh, that's stretching it, you know, a thousand years before Christ. Yeah, two thousand years easy. 2,500 years family history living in some of these towns and they were still majorities in a lot of the actual um, cities where the countryside around them were maybe a bit more Turkic um, that it's again post World War One they get pushed out and so um, a lot of them you know continue as communities to this day in Greece and you know there's this purge so 
at this time, you know, there's a huge amounts of Greeks living there that are Christian. Obviously, you know, the various, um, you know, different minorities uh, all over the place here. So, but within the, the Turkish hierarchy, you know, the, the, the political class, shall we say, a lot of these, you know, the Greeks, oh, they could make their feelings known, but they weren't part of the ruling mechanism, shall we say, under the Ottoman Empire. You need to basically be Turkic or one of the sort of um, uh, people that are brought into the system, shall we say. Uh, what the um, Janissaries, particularly, which were um, at least I don't know about if they were how much they were still running around at this point. Um, but Janissaries, at least traditionally, had always been they were males, always been um, kidnapped Christians, children. They kidnapped children and raised them Muslim, and so not entirely, but most of them were European. Um, so yeah, they were, you know, that was the, um, primary Muslim, uh, government because it was the primary empire of Islam, uh, policy to kidnap children from their parents to take them in, forcibly take them into a military class and in doing so raise them as Muslims, kidnap children to make them soldiers. Yes. Yeah. That was the policy. So. Yeah, you, you sort of get where I'm going with some of that. But, um, okay, so I don't know, and there was also a non, you know, a stay out of the war. And Ariu was saying it's about half and half, and I don't know. But I do believe, and I don't know the rulers at this time, but had they really put their foot down, I believe, not know, but believe, they could have kept Turkey out of the war, no matter what the war party was saying. Now, you may go... Why, why, you know, there's all the reasons to try to get back their empire, trying to strengthen their hold, blah, 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 blah. And so you could, and, you know, within the last 24 hours of making this, Ari was rattling off some of these things to me. Well, you know how many of the rifles, pistols, and machine guns the Ottoman Empire that, that it used, how many of them they made themselves? Think about this, you know, MPPs we have over here. Um, and we can now send them MPPs. And remember there were some event, uh, events sending, Germany was sending some MPPs to, to Turkey to sort of get them to ready. Okay, so just, just think. During, during this period of this war, or even before, but, you know, just think how many... How many rifles, pistols, machine guns the Ottomans made for themselves in their factories? Okay, you probably come up with some idea. And the, the basic number is zero. Okay, zero people. And I do, I know this to be basically a fact for, um, uh, Small arms, because that's what I know about. I know about small arms and the history of small arms. But I believe it's a fact for all of the ships, all of the art artillery, everything. Now, they might, might, I say just might, have been making their own ammunition, the bullets, you know, that shoot out of it, the danger beans out of the guns. Um, I do know they made huge purchases of ammunition, um, you know, around like 1900 and whatnot you know the different times when they were upgrading their arms sometimes buying from the austrians mostly buying from the germans but they were also buying huge amounts of ammunition to go with their new guns so they and when you get a new new gun you know and you're buying 10,000 guns and 10 million rounds of ammunition german manufacturers love selling things like that um you know they might have manufacturing. Oh, well, the Turks did make some some weapons, but those were basically muskets. 
I think they still make them today in sort of little shops. They were sort of, you know, local hunting guns, you know, flintlock or whatnot, muskets, the Giselle rifles or whatever. Yeah, they made some of that that junk, but those are just sort of like um, cottage industry BS, you know, not modern rifles and not in, um, you know, massive cranked out numbers to supply armies. So they were, they were, you know, they had no modern arms production anywhere in this empire. Okay, well, Italy has its own arms production. Serbia doesn't. Serbia had been buying mostly from Austria, and because of various political squeezings and whatnot, eventually they're buying them from Germany. And yeah, they're using them to fight here later. Um, but Austria is making their own weapons. Germany's making their own weapons. Belgium's making their own weapons. France is making their own weapons. Britain's making their own weapons. Spain's making their own weapons. Italy's making their own weapons. Switzerland's making their own weapons. Um, yeah, Denmark, Norway, Sweden making their own their own small arms. Russia's making their own small arms. Now they don't. Now, so many of those nations aren't making nearly enough that they're buying huge. You know, in the tens of thousands, maybe even into a hundred thousand plus production runs of different American small arms going into places like Russia and France and Britain. And so, yeah, they're not making enough, but oh, Japan's making its own small arms. China is making its own rifles. Okay, so that tells you. You know, and Eric keeps going, sick, sick man of Europe. Yeah, they are the sick man of Europe. But why in the hell you're watching this war happen that you're going into it? What are you really, that you, you can't, you can't, you know, you might be able to at this point, they might be able to crank out ammo, you know, bullets for guns. They're probably not making artillery shells. So... But they might be. I don't know. So, you know, what are they going to get out of this? Georgia? You know? Baku? You know, south of the Caucasus? Do they really think they're going to get north in Russia? Think they're going to get the Crimea back or something? Really? 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 Especially with Bulgaria, and I think Bulgaria enters the war on the German side first, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I'm not the biggest expert on World War One here, but you know they're not getting back Bulgarian territory. Oh, maybe they could get Rhodes and maybe Cyprus from the British or the Italians, maybe. Um, when Egypt, back? I'm sure they do, but really. Really? You, you think you're going to do that when you're so weak? Now, okay, that's sort of my analysis of Turkey. It's that weak. What do you do if you're Germany? And to a point, Austria is going to follow your lead. What do you do? One, what I would do, what I would do, desperately do is get Austrian and German diplomats into Constantinople and just keep I don't know whether you should be shouting or probably not with the Turks probably sipping tea with our coffee tea or coffee or something with them and saying don't go to war don't go to war whatever you do don't join the war whatever you do please 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 don't join the war um, and it, oh if you do we're giving you zero aid, no aid, no aid whatsoever. No, no, not any aid at all. We're not going to do any aid. And if they declare war on you, we're going to tell our Bulgarian allies to, to line the border and stop them there. We're not going to help you out. Just please, please don't go to war with them. That's what I would have been pleading with them to do. Pleading the, with them desperately to do. Because what I would want them to do is take their little warships, get into, you get merchant vessels, and like, I don't know, sail to Spain. 
get, oh, I don't know, food? Metal, you know, steel, iron, whatever. Maybe, you know, I don't know, Spain's cranking out weapons for France. Maybe you can't quite get them to make weapons for you. Okay. But, you know, trade with them there. And then escort the trade back to Turkey. I would, we can't go down and look at it. That's one thing I like about these talks and playing Hearts of Iron. It's a worldwide globe. Trade with, say, Latin America for food. Because Germany and Austria need food. So have these railways moving food and possibly not so much maybe weapons produced but raw materials or refined materials things like steel is more of a refined material but things like that um maybe you could get some oil coming up put it on you know build build up the railway down to here and um there's a little bit of that here, a little bit of railway here, it looks like. Um, but build railways or whatever, and um, but maybe up the Euphrates you can move um, fuel on barges or whatever, and then put it on rail cars and get it and move oil into to Germany for its needs. And just have it just armed enough, strong enough, have enough of a navy that none of the participants want to add a new front to the war. Just to have that threat go, hey, well, no, we're neutral. Yeah, oh, you want to buy from us? We'll, we'll buy, we'll sell to you too. Now just try, you know, don't let them quite outbid Germany on everything, but sell some of the stuff to, you know, oil or whatever to the, the Entente. But mainly be a supply logistics conduit that's protected, that just too big to like push into the war. That way you don't have to send off any German or Austrian support elements down to Turkey. No production needs to go down there. Um, true, you don't have a Turkish front, fine. But maybe the Russians just feel they need to keep, you know, just enough troops down here to make this area, well, they could attack. They might do it. It could, it could be something, you know. I'd put, you know, um, semi-mobilized, not like fully mobilized, ready ready to go to war, but whether there be more of these detachments or half-strength core that you could, you know, quickly spool up to being full strength through the reinforcements type system out here to sort of look like it, they might attack. We better, we better, you know, just face off there. Same thing down here, you know, uh, yeah, it might attack, but with the grind that is going on in Europe and then maybe in Greece as well, that they're just not going to want to open up a new front. They're going to want, the British are going to want those fresh Australian boys coming to fight on the Western Front and not find it, fighting the Turks down here, which they fought a lot of them down here, and up at Gallipoli. You know, they'll want them put into the Western Front war machine. And all of that. And just to try to keep them out. The reason I've sort of... This comes to mind is because of looking at this whole keep Turkey neutral. Is I think it would have been so much better for Germany in World War II had Italy remained neutral. But friendly to the Axis. Just strong enough that especially when it's Britain at war. They're not going to... Um, attack Italian forces even if there's every day there's trains going through the Brenner Pass doing who knows you know sending who knows what to Germany whether it's just food or whether it's you know they're buying um, oil from Iran and shipping it into Italy and then putting it on you know oil cars and bringing it into Germany whatever it might be it's just not quite worth attacking Italy is you know sort of gearing up for the war they're they're you know building weapons, they're building ships, they're building planes, they're doing all this stuff. Hit Italy keeps its promise of staying out of the war, but you better not attack us. And just makes all kinds of money, Reichsmarks, gold Reichsmarks, whatever, you know, um, selling stuff to Germany. And that would, and also keep, which would probably keep Yugoslavia neutral. And I don't know if we would see much of an allied attack into Vichy France. Especially worrying about, oops, well, if they attack there, maybe Italy will, like, you know, 
join the war or something. So even if America gets in, the Mediterranean is largely peaceful. Just think, all those German troops that didn't have to fight in Yugoslavia, didn't have to fight down in Greece, didn't have to fight in North Africa and later in Italy, all of those there um, might have to garrison a little because this is where it's going to happen. Might have to garrison the Western Front a little bit more. But all the rest of those troops could be sent against Russia. All that effort could be sent against Russia. And so, yeah, get um, hung Hungary and Romania in an, in the war against Russia, just because they're sort of here. And yeah, just keep Italy out as a friendly neutral. I think that would have done so much better for Germany than what happened. And yeah, now that's not what happened. And Mussolini basically enters the war without Hitler's permission expands the war into Greece, not only without Hitler's permission, but without informing Hitler that he was planning on attacking Greece. So yeah, um, not that Germany controls it, but I just see that as being a um, better um, plan than what happened. Okay, well, again, you know the drill. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like videos. If you don't like the video, fine. Hit that don't like but button but tell me why now I know this was a long talk at the end of this but I warned you at the beginning of it that there was no more gameplay so you could leave so you better be here because you want to not just because you thought there was something more gameplay coming but uh, yeah so if you don't like it tell me why uh, I'll take that to heart and that doesn't mean I'm going to change anything because if nine out of ten people like something and one doesn't well we're going to go with you know a majority but you know I do want to hear from dissenters I really do. I mean it. And I don't get upset when I get criticism. I mean, you suck doesn't help. You suck because of a reason that can help me. Um, whether to improve or just change or I don't know. But so um, if you would, um, you can you can dislike it. But please tell me why if you decide to do so. And of course, again, on those notes, please post comments, questions, tips. See you next time for more historical gaming.